Story time. I've never been to a race, a speedway, will you say? A NASCAR race, a dirt track race, a go-kart race, you name it. I've never been. My friend, let's call him Greg, decided that I should go. He said I should go. He said I'm gonna enjoy it. I thought it looked cool. We got there, there was sort of a meeting going on, explaining some regulations. So no cars were driving around the track, which Greg mentioned as odd, but I took it in stride. I figured, hey, these people know what they're doing. They've done it before. I'm the newbie. It was supposed to be championship night for the truck series, but as we eventually found out, they were 40 five minutes behind schedule. 45 minutes. Whatever. Instead of five, it'll be 545. We bought a Coke. Figured we'd wait this thing out. So they start qualifying. For you newbies like me, qualifying means one car goes around the track by itself three times, and then they take the fastest recorded time, and then they use that to determine who starts in first place and who starts in last place. Well, Three cars in, after a 45 minute delay, one of the trucks crashes. That's right, by himself on the track. No one else is out there with him. He's by himself. So after he crashes, we wait for them to clear the track. The thing is, the two people that qualified before this guy, they didn't spin out. Then they say, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be my worst attempt at the racing announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, there prepares to be some water on the track. So if you'll bear with us as we get that cleaned up. So they finished qualifying the trucks. We're now an hour and 15 minutes behind schedule. Whatever. Then they bring out these really tiny cars. I mean, so tiny. Just take a look. So cute, right? I mean, these are awesome. They're like miniature NASCARs. Are they called NASCARs? We're gonna call them NASCARs. So these cars start going around the track. They're not reliable. They start breaking down. They start spinning out. They start crashing without anyone near them. After a couple cautions and a couple more cautions, they finish that race. Now it's time for big cars, real NASCARs. I should mention that one of the cars, number three, Greg is cheering for number three, was up on blocks for the entire hour and 15 minute delay. It was up on blocks during the little car race, and when the big cars finally decided it was their turn, number three decided, hmm, I'll give it a shot. And I'm cheering for number 55 because he's a Royals fan. Well, the big cars got three laps in, and there was a wreck. You guessed it, number three. The car that was being worked on this entire night wasn't working. So the caution comes out again. By this time, we're an hour and a half behind schedule and we've had 10 cautions. Do you know how long it takes for a caution? Could be about 10 laps. The caution truck has to come out. The cars have to fall in behind him. They have to start going slow. They have to go around the wrecked car. The tow truck has to come out, push the wrecked car, or pull the wrecked car, or tow the wrecked car, or wreck the wrecked car, or do something with the wrecked car. It's anything to get it out of the way so the other people can race. They make all the cars stop on the track. Take a look for yourself. This is the opposite of racing. It's called, it's called stop. Yeah, they're stopped, sitting still. Apparently, ladies and gentlemen, we have water on the track again. Who decided to put water in cars? So then they start going around again. Well, it turns out there's a hole in the track this big. A hole in the road. Now, when I'm driving my car, a hole in the road, I like to avoid it. But I'm usually only going between 45 and 60 miles per hour. These guys we're just going a wee bit faster than that. And a hole in the road is a big deal. So here we are, 
an hour and a half behind with multiple cautions and then they take 45 minutes to fix this hole in the track. So then they fixed the hole in the track and the car started going around again, right? Under caution, but we're going. Don't get your hopes up because there was a false start, which means we go back to caution and the cars go back around slowly. Going back around the track, finally. Five laps in, guess what? The two cars in front, crash. Guess what that means? You're right, another caution. I mean, there were so many cautions, the caution truck had to go to the pits and get new tires. We finally got through the stock car race after several more cautions, for various reasons. So then another race comes out, smaller cars this time. I'm good to go. I got some great footage from real close. As soon as I turn my camera off, a wreck, another caution. There were so many cautions and delays, the track PA system put on the radio of another race that was happening in a different part of the country so that we could listen to it while we sat there and watched nothing. But we were pretty excited. We thought we're gonna at least get to see the truck championship series go around, right? I mean, it's only 10.30 and they're only two and a half hours behind schedule, but hey, after this race, the trucks are coming out. Wrong. We had Legends. Now, Legends are really cool cars, and I don't have a great shot of them because my phone was dying, but I do have a good shot of what happened after the wreck when we were under... caution. I'd love to say I have great shots of these cars slamming into one another and bursting into flames, but no. All I have are clips of the cautions. We had to leave before the truck championship even ran because, well, we were tired. Get it? That being said, I totally understand why people go to racetracks now. I totally get it. I really do. I don't fault them for it. I don't think they're weird or silly. I think it's a great time. I would definitely go again, and I am going again. The only thing I have to say to you is, if you're going to race, proceed with caution. It's been an exciting night of stopping. <laughs> <laughs>